to his book that you take care of the Quran, you defend the Quran, you honor the Quran, you live by the Quran. His messenger وسلم, by following his sunnah, defending his honor and propagating his teachings and then for the a'imma of the Muslims, the leaders of the Muslims, those in charge of the Muslims and ammati and the general masses. Everyone deserves sincere advice from you. Because Islam, al-deen nasih like al-hajju arafah. What does that mean? That one of the most important pillars of hajj is arafah. Al-deen nasiha, meaning one of the most important aspects of Islam is good advice, sincere advice. If you're not advising people, you're cheating them. If you see the brothers still not doing what they are supposed to do, and unless wisdom entails that you kind of leave it alone for some time, if you just leave them like that, you're cheating your brothers. You can't leave someone going. You can't find a Muslim on his way to hell and say, Khali wali. That's one of the times where you don't say that. A Muslim going to hell, come here, yaqi. what do you want? Change your ways. If he's misguided, you call him to the sunnah. If he's disobedient, you call him to obedience. Depending on the situation. But we must do it. Otherwise, we're cheating the Muslims. And if we cheat the Muslims, they will cheat us. And if we cheat each other, we're not. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُهُمْ We become like the munafiqeen وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُهُمْ What do they do? يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمُنْكَرِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمَعْرُوفِ They do it the other way around, the hypocrites. And we cannot afford to have their characteristics, needless to say. We will have a special lecture concerning that, inshaAllah ta'ala. طيب, the last narration in this context. حديث ابن مسعود صحيح مسلم the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ نَبِيٍ بَعَثَهُ اللَّهُ قَبْلِي إِلَّا كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ أُمَّتِي حَوَارِيُونَ وَأَصْحَابِ يَأْخُذُونَ بِسُنَّتِهِ وَيَقْتَدُونَ بِأَمْرِهِ ثُمَّ إِنَّهَا تَخْلُفُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خُلُوفِ يَفْعَلُونَ يَقُولُونَ مَا لَا يَفْعَلُونَ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا لَا يُؤْمَرُونَ فَمَنْ جَاهَدَهُمْ بِيَدِهِ فَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ وَلَيْسَ وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ حَبَّةُ قَرْبِهِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said There wasn't a Prophet that came before me except that among his followers there were disciples and companions who used to يَأْخُذُونَ بِسُنَّتِي They used to adhere to his sunnah وَيَقْتَدُونَ بِأَمْرِي And he would follow strictly his command then they will be followed with people who will say that which they do not do. They tell you we're calling you to the sunnah and they live upon bid'ah. Their whole, their whole deen is bid'ah, but they don't tell you I'm calling you to a bid'ah. No, no, no. They say this is bid'ah hasana, which is really part of the sunnah. And, وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا لَا يُمَرُونَ And they do things which they're not commanded to do. That's the bid'ah right there. No one told them to do something, but we want to do it. Milad. We must do Milad Nabawi. We love the Messenger of Allah. You were not commanded to celebrate the birthday of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Woe to you. You take the matter lightly. Every time you like an act of worship, you do it. You're just like the Christians. Every time they come up with something new and the Pope likes it, it becomes part of the religion. It becomes part of the religion. They invent as they go along. So much so that in the average churches, they have an orchestra. On Sunday, there's a full musical band, straight up party, just after they have their wine, you know, and the bread which is supposed to be the blood of Jesus and the flesh of Jesus, this is called a party. Not a, not, and this is their ibadah of the shayateen, obviously, in the, in the churches. And we can't be doing like the Christians. We cannot. We have to stick to our deen. So that narration says a lot. So why then, then, let me just, now this is text, textually speaking. Logically speaking, think about it here. How is Iman and Da'wah related? Think of it as the Da'i being a container. You are a container. And when the container is full, what happens? It overflows. If there was a container and you're pouring Iman in it, making water, you're putting water in it, what's, what's going to happen when it reaches the top? It's going to overflow. Things around are going to get wet. The carpet will get wet, the cloth, whatever you have there. The da'i should be at such a level of iman that he cannot contain the iman. He cannot keep it to himself. It overflows to 
people. You can't just see people going astray and you just sitting there, you know, uh, cross arms and, and looking at them like, okay, this is nice. You can't. Iman prevents you from accepting it. And the Prophet ﷺ exemplified that in his behavior so much so that Allah would have to reveal ayat in order to console him and to make him feel better. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاقِعُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَادَ الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفًا Perhaps you would kill yourself. Kill yourself out of grief over these people if they don't believe in this hadith, in this speech. Yani the Prophet ﷺ reached a level where he was, he was, his type was chest constricted. And Allah Azza wa Jal will reveal ayat to comfort him. To comfort him. فَلِذَٰلِكَ فَدْعُوا وَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاهُمْ So for that, invite and remain upright as you were commanded and do not follow their desires. And many ayat where Allah will console him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he stressed over the da'wah. When was the last time we had this feeling? Some of us have been working with these kuffar, the, the, the Hindus and the Christians that worked for 5-10 years. Never told them a word about Islam. Never gave them a pamphlet or a booklet. Why? Too shy. He's in a higher position. Maybe he will fire me. Maybe this, maybe that, maybe this, maybe that. No da'wah will take place. Where's the iman? Where's the iman that forces you to share the message with the people? If we don't have it, meaning we need to begin with ourselves. Where's our iman? If the iman was there, Trust me, the da'wah would be there. So they go hand in hand. That's a logical explanation. Now let us look at the knowledge. So we proved right now, I hope, that da'wah is primarily based on iman. Because Allah, Allah combined them together in the Quran and so did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the sunnah. What about knowledge? Listen. Qul. <coughs> هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني unbelievable believable because it's the Quran let me use another term astonishing harmony between the ayat and the concepts say this is Allah commanding the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say this is my way the way of who the way of who? The Messenger of Allah. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ This is my way. أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ I invite to Allah. Not to me, not to my group, not to, not to, not to anyone else. Don't say, come join us. We are Jama'at X. This is our book. This is how we give da'wah. We meet, we go, we eat. No, no, Habibi. No, Habibi. You call to Allah. And that is not restricted to any location on earth, not geographically, not otherwise. Da'wah is all the time with everyone, are organized, unorganized, it doesn't matter. Everyone has a job to do in da'wah. Ala <coughs> basiratin. This is the key word. Basira from basar. And basar is seeing. And seeing brings what? Certainty. If I'm looking at this paper, if I were blind, and you told me, Abu Mus'ab, there's a paper on the table. I trust you, but can I have yaqeen? Why? I didn't see. When you see something, it's done. It's done. It's closer to certainty. Basira from basar, seeing insight. Insight. Yani sure knowledge. You must call to Allah upon sure knowledge. Now look how the ayah continues. Ana, meaning the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the pronoun is referring to him, وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي and whosoever follows me. So we have to follow the same methodology. You call to Allah upon knowledge. Da'wah, you call to Allah upon what? Knowledge. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ درجات. This is where it comes. You must have knowledge. What does that mean? Some people misunderstand the ayah. Say, okay, I'm not, I didn't graduate from Medina University or Umm Al-Qura or, you know, whatever other places they may mention. 
I really didn't receive any, you know, uh, professional, academic knowledge of Islam. I know bits and pieces and what have you. Then I shouldn't really give da'wah. Because da'wah here is for the ulama. We say you're right and you're wrong. You're right because ultimately the du'at in the ultimate sense are the people of knowledge, are the scholars. However, the level of da'wah they give is proportional to the level of knowledge they have. You and I have to give da'wah according to what we have. If you know, let's say Islam is the alphabet, the English alphabet from A to Z. If you know from A to H, you give da'wah from A to H. You give da'wah to A to H. That would be sound, sound odd. You will give da'wah to that portion of what you know. If you learn up to M or N, then you give da'wah to M or N. You learn the whole thing, you give da'wah to the whole thing. You know A, you give da'wah to A. بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً If you don't know كُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Then how are you a Muslim? If you can't explain to a non-Muslim the concept of the oneness of Allah, the uniqueness of Allah, the greatness of Allah, the fact that Allah is the only one deserving of worship, how are you a Muslim? You can be a Muslim without understanding that. If you understand it, you should be able to teach it to others. So the knowledge. Don't think you have to be Shaykh al-Islam. We will speak about it, inshallah. But you have to know what you're doing. And according to what you know, you give da'wah. Now, let me ask you a question. Is everyone here able to take money out of his pocket? Is anyone here unable, has not learned how to take money out of the pocket? Answer me. All of you can take money out of the pocket. Beautiful. Is every one of you able to hand over some material from your hand to someone else's hand? Yes. There you go. You have to give da'wah according to that. Go to the da'wah center, pay five riyals. Get, I'm not doing advertisement for JDC, by the way. Get, pay five riyals, get three, four booklets about Islam, and give it to a non-Muslim. Jazakallah khairan, you've done plenty. Don't say, I, I don't know, I can't. Okay, you can't speak. You're not a speaker. You don't feel comfortable. You're shy. You're qahwa. That's none of my business. You, you missed that one. You're shy. You're qahwa. Never mind. You give him at least books. You give him something. If you can't, you don't have money. You're too shy to give him something. I don't know how shy can someone be. At least act nicely. Barakallah fi. Show Islam in your behavior, conduct, uh, gentleness, kindness, compassion, forbearance, and what have you. Let them see in you the example of a good Muslim. That's da'wah too. It doesn't have to be that you have a lecture and you, you know, talk as much as I do. No, this is one aspect of da'wah. And this may not be the most effective either. It may not be. Allah alam where effectiveness is. The best way could be when you sit one on one with someone and you speak heart to heart. Allahu A'lam. We try everything which is available. Any halal means for da'wah, we embark upon it. Provided that it is according to the law of Islam, Alhamdulillah, Allah is the one who brings out the results. But don't deprive yourself, whether male or female, whether old or young. Whether old or young, everyone has a role to play. Every non Muslim around you should know about Islam through you. Don't leave them unattended. They may, they may on the Yawm al Qiyamah, say, Oh Allah, never bothered to tell me anything. I didn't know. <coughs> he may be saved, we may be in trouble. Because if someone didn't receive the message of Islam entirely, then he will be tested by Allah. He will not go to Jahannam. وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا Allah says, we were never to punish people until a messenger has been sent. If they haven't received the message of Islam, they may be excused. Now we will be held accountable for not doing our job. So, <coughs> da'wah is our job. The other ayah, ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idha wal maw'idha til hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan. Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom, good speech, good preaching, and argue with them in a manner which is best. I'm trying to prove knowledge is integrated with da'wah. Can you, can you invite people to Islam through wisdom if you don't have knowledge? No, 